Well, hello everybody. It is uh, the technically the second day of my Indiegogo campaign, and um, I've got a lot of images uh, over here popping up from that. And I want to talk a little bit about because uh, I'm, I'm still it took off way better than I thought it would, which I was pleasantly surprised, of course. And uh, I'm trying to, as I go, learn from it. And what did I do? What, what did I do good and bad so far? Um, it it just went, you know, out of the gate, took off, and I'm trying to say, okay, what, how did that happen? And um, so first, I just want to look at the campaign a little bit. Let's let's take a look, shall we? Uh, all right. So here we have uh, the campaign on Indiegogo. The link is in the description if you would like to check it out. Um, so I've got. I did not do a video, and I had started one, and realized I was having some computer issues with memory and, and things, and it was going to set me back another day. And so I said, "Well, I'll, I might do it in in a day or two." As it turned out, uh, the more I talked with people who were backing and have backed a lot of projects, and talking to people who have done Indiegogos in the past successfully and looking at their analytics and how many people actually watched the video, along with the anecdotal evidence of people in chats and various YouTube things, uh, saying, yeah, they don't really, it doesn't make a difference. They don't usually watch it. And if they do, you know, they don't really, it doesn't, it's not the deciding factor typically. And I was thinking about that and why would that be? And I think with uh, a, a thing like a comic, it's not so important because the nature of the medium being what it is, visual and you know, pictures and words, it doesn't require audio or emotion to sell it. It could, I mean, it couldn't, it, it could help if someone saw an awesome video and was like, oh, I, I want that book. But with Indiegogo and crowdfunding, if you've got a movie, a, a audio, like music project, um, if you've got a product you need to demonstrate then yeah you, you need to have a video but for comics I think I have a hunch that a static image that people just see and can click through and see like we click through these old um, some of the design elements and we get to the pages and things and uh, I think that really is enough to have a successful campaign obviously um, since mine seemed to be, we, uh, it's in, it's, you know, we're only a day and a half into it. I'm at 11,000. Um, I did not expect that at all, but, um, I think what I, I have a theory and I say this as someone who has backed Indiegogo's and projects and, and thinking about how fast did it take me to decide what, uh, if I was going to back it or not. And I, I would if I had to guess, I would say it's the top third of the page that sells this. By this point, I think the average backer has decided, even if it's subconsciously, just that feeling of, I want, I want this, I want to be a part of this. Um, and I went through, like my original thing had tons of text all the way down. And it was just my first pass. But by this point, again, like down here, they've already decided. They're, they're, they've pretty much the deal has been sealed or blown. And so by here, you see my text gets less and less. And this comes from talking to other people. And we were, I was going back and forth um, uh, on this campaign. And um, you know, I was talking to, uh, um, Doug to Naples going through it with me. And we were, we were getting into the weeds of the text. And by the down here, I remember saying, by this point, the person's already decided, right? So I'm taking that text out. Um, so one of the things I think that if you don't have a video, make sure you know you've got your your strong images up here. Uh, I think I think I did that right. And your text, the top third, is uh, super important, but to the point. And I was looking at some of the most successful uh, Indiegogos, like uh, Icarus and the Sun, that got five hundred thousand dollars. At that campaign, it was super simple. Now comes to my next point. Um, that campaign was built on a, a relationship with an audience and um, the artist writer uh, Piccolo I think was his, his name um, had built up a huge social media following so that helped so people uh, I, I, I don't believe that all that money came from people that already knew him a large portion did I'm sure but 
there's something about when a, a campaign that's successful and starts getting circulated more and people start sharing it and if it, if it goes gangbusters and the number gets really high, it gets shared because people are like, look at this. If the art's really good, it's look at, that's what, like Long Harbor. If you haven't checked out Long Harbor on Indiegogo, go, go, go look at that. That, those images started circulating my Twitter before I knew who Alejandro was. I knew anything about the book. I just kept seeing that pop up because people were sharing it so much. So, um, strong images and, um, the more successful you are, the more it gets shared and stuff. But I think the biggest thing for, for a lot of these, especially these Indiegogo books, is that people are taking the time to, by the way, that number 202, that was my, one of the worst bosses I ever had. That was his extension on his phone. I will. It was also the worst flight I ever had. <laughs> I will. It's my least favorite number. It's 202. <laughs> Except when it comes to the 202nd backer. In that context, my favorite iteration 202 anyway so um one of the things that is super important if you're going to launch and this is one of the things i'm kind of thinking about like i did not expect this to do so well how did this happen and looking back i think uh youtube and twitter and just uh being on social media and uh, i started the youtube channel here uh, what two years ago now two and a half and it was very simple like i just wanted to do a vlog that chronicled day-to-day -day stuff and i started connecting with an audience that way and in, in the last year, connecting with other people, this was like a huge step. People with uh, bigger audiences, friends that had bigger audiences, and doing shows with uh, like Elliot Fernandez and Doug Tenaple every day, uh, doing consistent things, constantly showing up, interacting well with your, your chat and the audience, uh, just entertaining, uh, try, or at least trying to be. Um, when we do paranormals on Thursday nights here, um, you know, you're, you're, but this was a big shift in kind of my thinking of my whole, you know, who I am, what my job is. And for me, I got into that, um, that mindset of, I'm a comic creator. I make comics. How do you make comics? You go to an editor, you get work. Go to an editor, bug the editors, try to get work, blah, 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 blah. And maybe do your own thing on the side. But the world has kind of changed. I, I've, and I've noticed this a couple of years ago, like when social media came in, you have access to your your audience directly as a creator. And if you can write and draw, you've got the tools, all the tools you need, essentially. You, you can create a thing, you can connect with an audience. The missing piece, I think I didn't, because it was kind of frustrating because you know that, how do you utilize that? And the missing piece, I think, was the, the customer and the fans and the audience kind of have to come on board and trust this new system of you know crowdfunding which has been around forever but most people like i've done two crowdfunding books before on kickstarter they were successful uh the first very first one didn't failed that was years ago like 10 years ago um but or no almost 10 years now the uh the other two i learned from that the other two were successful and I, but i really think that as a viable it's it, things are just so in tra transition now the missing piece really was, I think, the audience kind of, the connection, like the mindset of, not that I'm a creator, uh, and this is kind of about getting back to my shift in my who I am, is like doing the thing with Elliot on um, Thursday nights with Doug and just being around and just having fun and entertaining, just having some light entertainment and and doing all that for free, which is, is kind of a... It helps when, for when the time comes for the project, like with Gunship Thunder Punch or Doom Kicker Elliot's got uh, coming up today, launching today. So go check, check that out. Um, when it comes time, people are already connected with you and they're more likely to buy something, back something, be a part of something and be excited for something for someone they know as opposed to the traditional sense, which is publish this book it gets promoted maybe by a company put on a shelf and you're trying to get the passerby on the shelf and promote. And so um, the frustrating thing or the challenge, not, I mean, it can be frustrating, but it's more of a challenge, right? And the frustrating thing is figuring it out is that it's so organic that it does. there's no like, do this, 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 and this, and this will happen. Well, I don't know how fast things will happen. You just need to be consistent in these things. Uh, every, I think every, every artist needs to have a YouTube channel and try to get to the point and as awkward at first it was for me, looking back at my first tries at videos, some of them I didn't even upload because they were just so awkward. Getting used to this, like talking to a camera 
and somebody that's not there, you you guys. Um, and that just comes with doing it and trying to to be you know uh, engaging in some way, and it's a process of learning. The other thing that I realized, and I did not plan this, was having kind of interact with all you guys in the audience. Uh, starting in probably October or November, I kept talking about I'm going to do an Indiegogo. And that's all I said, like when's when because people ask, when are you going to do a crowdfunded book? And I'm like, I've got one more, I'm working on one. So that was like planting a little seed. And then I did that. I said that for a couple months because I was still developing things where I'm working on stuff and finishing things up, other projects. And then after the new year, I was like, oh, I know what this is. And I would drop little hints and I would do design stuff here and there and just a little, little drip leading up and talking about it and then releasing the name within two, a couple weeks. And what I didn't realize I was doing was I, was I was kind of building up that anticipation to the project for nearly eight months. And uh, I think that's another element. The other element, I'm not sure. But that's, I'm, again, I'm only two days in, but looking at the, you know, how, how well it did when I would thought I was going to struggle to just get funded, I'm trying to like, well, what did, as you go, it's good to, I think, to try to figure things out. So I'm trying to look back and say, what, what did I do right? Now, I have gotten some criticism from more successful people on Indiegogo. They're like, you set your funding goal way too high because if you had set it lower, it, you would have got funded faster or uh, fully funded, obviously, at a lower thing. And it would have, the algorithm in Indiegogo would have, you would have been trending faster. It's true. Uh, but a lot of that is just the um, first time on Indiegogo, uh, you know, the, the whole artists are a, a, a funny bunch. Right, we're all like, oh, our stuff isn't. You never look at your stuff like an outsider looks at your stuff. So I don't really know. My thought was, people are kept asking for um, when is this going to launch? We're in, we're in. They were super excited, and I'm like, am I seeing the same, you know, five or six people over and over? And I'm just imagining it's a bunch of people. Uh, so you always have that. Is my perception actually right, or is this going to crash and burn? And every, I think, every artist, if they're honest. Just about most artists, if they're honest, I think would, would back me up on that. So, uh, just a couple thoughts on Indiegogo, um, and I've got to get to work. I'm trying to do all the promotion things and and ship things and catch up on things. It's busy, it's busy, busy around here. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you have not checked out Gunship Thunder Punch, it's in the description. And uh, come on board. I'm getting ready to announce the first stretch goal. I believe is going to be at 15,000, which we're really close. And working out what the next one's going to be. So I'm adding stuff. I'm making the project as good as I can. And uh, the next month is going to be just this thing growing. So uh, like, subscribe, like that smash button. I'll see you next time.